Hello everyone, Loremaster of SoTech, and today is going to be a notably shorter video because I am technically adding on to yesterday's video. We will get around to the corn focus and predictions tomorrow, but I, uh, <laughs> I opened the comment section for today's, or I guess yesterday's video, and, uh, <laughs> just, just to call up everywhere. Um, I don't really have a great excuse. I, I was so focused on trying to think of like elf stuff. Like I was really, really struggling, racking my brain for like, what, what are they, what could they possibly do for dark elves and wood elves that I just totally skipped over who is frankly the most likely Slanesh character to be the <laughs> DLC legendary Lord, which is Dakala the denied one. Uh, so for those unaware, uh, though, if you had popped down to the comments, you would have probably received a full education because so many people were like, so tech, what the, what the hell is wrong with you? How could you forget to call um, to call the denied one is a very interesting character when looking at kind of the grand scope of chaos champions, because she is one of the very, 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 very few chaos champions who is not human. And not only is she not human. She is an elf and chaos elves are extremely rare in Warhammer fantasy. They, they exist, but they're few and far between. So the story behind Takala is actually pretty sad, but way back, like way, 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 way back during the great catastrophe, right? So chaos is born into the world. It starts flooding over everything. Uh, everyone ends up attacked. The war lasts for hundreds of years, but Eventually, it hits a point where Ulthuan is under siege by mainly the demons of Slanesh. Granted, there are demons of all the types, but Nakari is kind of the big bad leading the assault on Ulthuan, and so there's a lot of Slanesh stuff involved. Now, by this point in the war, uh, quite a few centuries into it, the Dark Gods had been going pretty wild with creating demon princes. So Bellicor had already risen by this point, and there were already quite a few demon princes of the various individual gods after kind of the oopsie that was Bellicor when he just refused to do what they told him to. So with that in mind, uh, one of the demon princes, um, a very, very, very important demon prince of Slanesh, Arguably, his first was Samael, and Samael is uh, one of the most beloved of Slanesh, and certainly one of the oldest demon princes, and he was one of the great demon generals in charge of invading Ulthuan, but during kind of a lot of the fighting and skirmishes and stuff, he became aware of Takala, and he wanted her. He desired her for himself. Uh, because she was just incredibly beautiful and innocent and he really wanted to corrupt that innocence, but being a Slaneshi piece of garbage, he would not be satisfied with merely taking her and just killing her family. No, 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 no. He wanted to, you know, he wanted to drag it out. So instead of just attacking, he instead basically starts torturing her family. So, um, waging war on them psychologically using magic and a lot of really nasty tactics to really screw with them and make them afraid for their lives and their very souls, but he wouldn't kill them specifically. He'd kill their pets. He'd kill their servants. He'd kill their friends. He was kind of like working his way around them. Um, killing all the people they knew and loved, isolating them, and really messing with them in every possible way that he could. And what he told her father was that he would spare them and stop torturing them if her father would agree to give Dakala to him. So if her family betrayed her and offered her up as a as a sacrifice, essentially, to Samael to be wed to him for eternity then he would leave them alone. And eventually they reached a breaking point and they agreed. So her father hands her off to Samael to be wed and she is married to the demon prince. 
And of course, Dakala is utterly sickened. And not only has she endured all of this horrible torture, but now she has been betrayed by her family to a fate worse than death. But Samael, being Samael, had one last little card to play. And when he received his wife, uh, he promised, he told her, I can give you anything you desire for you are my bride. So I will give you, I will give you anything you would wish. And as he knew, she would say Dakala wishes to have revenge. Dakala wishes to, um, unleash her fury upon her family. So Samael blesses her with his own power and she, uh, becomes swollen with, uh, unholy energy. Uh, and she goes home and brutally tortures and murders her entire family ending with her father. Uh, so she kills all of her own family and Samael, um, uh, relishes, uh, his completed work and his new bride. Now, surprisingly, um, although Dakala Ha, definitely has some very conflicted feelings about it. And I, there's a part of her that hates Samael. There's also a part of her that kind of loves Samael, uh, because of this power he gives her and he teaches her how to embrace Slanesh and to embrace every desire and to push every sensation past the point of excess. And she ends up becoming fully dedicated to Slanesh. See, she isn't just a prisoner. She goes all in. Um, you know, you could argue that there's a pretty heady mix of uh, Stockholm syndrome in there, but nonetheless, she becomes a devoted worshiper of Slanesh and the God of excess is incredibly pleased by Dakala's, um, acts of tribute, the atrocities she commits because being an elf, she in a way kind of knows how to uh, torture and hurt and tempt other elves in a way that no demon or mortal could really conceive of. And she takes advantage of that. So not only is she uh, a nightmarish individual during the entirety of the great catastrophe, but even for the following millennia, she continues to be uh, quite the terrifying individual. And she continues to raise in Slanesh's esteem until, and which uh, Slanesh rewards her with many gifts being that she starts to mutate quite a bit. So she mutates immensely to the point where she has the lower body of a snake. Uh, if memory serves, I believe she has four arms instead of two, depending on which, uh, if I recall correctly, that's right. Um, there is some artwork that shows her with a bow, uh, though traditionally she's seen wielding, uh, several like different blades. Uh, she, uh, has, she, becomes very, she's larger, uh, uh, being, uh, than you would probably initially expect. She's not really human sized anymore. She's a little bit larger. She's not huge, but she's like, you know, she's, she's quite terrifying. Her speed is completely unearthly. She has demonic strength. She is a, uh, she's, uh, has a very, very potent form of venom. She is quite terrifying. However, as she continues to ascend in the, uh, the ranks of the Slaneshi followers and generals, Samael gets worried. Uh, Samael gets jealous uh, because he does not like the idea that she might grow to be more beloved with Slanesh than he is. And he becomes envious of his wife. Now, Takala knows Samael very well by this point because they've been married for so long, and she realizes that Samael is contemplating killing her, so she flees from him. And she flees from the realm of chaos into the chaos waste uh, because she is still mortal. She is not bound to the ether. She can freely um, wander the mortal realm because she does not need magic to sustain herself. So after she flees, uh, Samael calls upon Slanesh and basically uh, demands that Slanesh bring his back, bring his wife back to him. Now, Slanesh, being who he is, uh, a god that very much exemplifies pride and arrogance, uh, is at first quite angry with Samael for demanding anything of him and basically reminds him that uh, you can command nothing of me because I have made you everything that you are and I could take it away just as easily. And of course, Samael feels terrible and is a sad little child because that's, you know, 
when Slaneshi demons get admonished by Big Daddy, they they tend to take it pretty hard. And uh, however, Slanesh says, you know, do not do not fear and do not be sad, for you are still one of my favored. You are still my favorite, at least at that time, because Sigval and Azazel aren't around yet. And he says, so um, to show you my love for you, um, I will make you a bargain. I know that you fear that Dakala will rise in my esteem higher than you. So I promise you that so long as a Dakala never returns to you, she shall never ascend to the rank of demon prince. She shall never uh, go through apotheosis and become a demon. She shall forever be mortal. No matter how powerful she gets, no matter how much she pleases me, no matter what, she will never become a demon unless she returns to you willingly. If she returns to you uh, as your wife and submits herself to you once more to do with as you please, only in that instance will she have the opportunity to, um, you know, grow greater than you. However, however, she must do so willingly. Samael is not allowed to force her to return to him. He's not allowed to go out and get her himself. She has to come back of her own volition. That's the bargain. So ever since that time, uh, Dakala has wandered the world, and that is why she is known as the Denied One, because Slanesh denies her uh, the rank of Demon Princess. He denies her apotheosis, uh, so long as she refuses to return to Samael, which she does, knowing that it would likely lead to her death. Um, she would need to gain a pretty considerable amount of additional power in order to take on her husband, uh, seeing as he is one of the most powerful immortal champions of Slanesh there is. Um, so uh, that's essentially her story. But she, as I said, you wouldn't really be able to tell that she was Elven uh, anymore. She is pretty horrific to look at, being a giant snake lady monster. Um, that uh, she has some pretty gross abilities, to be honest. Uh, she has a toxin, like a like a little potion she creates, and it is created by a particular mixture of her venom and bodily excretions. Um, that when properly mixed, if it, even a single drop is consumed by a mortal, they will basically com become completely and utterly addicted to the substance. Um, th like it takes over their mind and their will and nothing else matters, but getting more of it. And so they become her eternal slaves. So Dakala's, um, Legion, her her warrior horde, is uh, well known for being incredibly devoted and has this massive legion of slaves who constantly are following her around because whenever they take prisoners after a battle, she forcefully, uh, she forces people to consume some of it. So they basically lose their own willpower. And it's a, a pretty horrible fate uh, because if memory serves, if you have too, if you, if you don't get more of it, uh, obviously like the craving for it will drive you insane to your death, but having too much of it also can result in an absolutely horrific, painful death as you, uh, are poisoned and kind of wither away. So like, there's no happy ending. Um, I, I forget what her, uh, her legion is called off the top of my head. Uh, but she, she kind of has like a warrior, a chaos warrior horde. Uh, that follows her around. That being said, because she is an elf, because she has this very notable relationship with the elves, she really would make the most sense um, as the legendary lord. Uh, I, I kind of would expect to see her more in the Warriors of Chaos roster than the Mono Slanesh roster, um, but I don't really... I also do not think there's any kind of hard and fast rule for that because I, um, I would have said the opposite for Az Azazel. Like I, for me, Azazel makes way more sense being mono God than he did being Warriors of Chaos. Uh, personally, I think they should have used Akala instead of Azazel for the Champions of Chaos pack because she would have made a lot more sense because she's kind of an interesting parallel to Valkia. Um, and she also is not a demon prince, um, you know, being like a full mortal and like Azazel is known for being like the 
the the grand like the overall general of Slanesh's demonic hordes. So I always thought that was kind of a weird decision that they did what they did, but presumably it was because Azazel fulfills kind of a more interesting battlefield role. Um, Dakala is she is very very fast, um, but she's kind of just like a super elite duelist beat stick. So her role kind of mixes it. Her role is kind of already covered much more by Nakari and Sigvald than Azazel, who was a flying character that is like, he's a flying character that is also a wizard uh, and a demon prince. He brings kind of a notably different role. Um, so I can understand why they went with Azazel from that perspective of that. He was the most unique character to bring into that slot. Um, that being said, I would not be surprised at all to see Takala uh, be the character that arrives uh, for Slanesh if they end up fighting up fighting against the elves. Now, it's totally possible it's not the elves. It's totally possible it could be two completely other different races, uh, in which case, you know, who knows? And even then, I, I find predicting lords without hints to be uh, kind of an effort in futility often because uh, CA sometimes does some kind of what I would call whack decisions. Uh, but yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to, I, I was so like, oh my God, how could I forget to call it that I, I just wanted to ded dedicate kind of a whole video to it that is a little shorter. Uh, give <laughs> give the poor editor uh, a day where he doesn't have to edit like an hour long video. So uh, please do come back to join me here tomorrow for uh, the corn DLC prediction video. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. And I will see you guys then. Thanks so much for watching. Have an excellent day.